This 300 TDI in this 110 is becoming to be a bit of a problem. It's losing coolant, but we can't find out where, where it's from. It's been on a 15 PSI test for five hours with the engine idling. It never dropped a little bit. I'll have to come a bit closer because I think the wind's going to make a lot of noise on this microphone. But anyway, what's happening is I took it for a 325 kilometer trip the other day and the coolant went down by three quarters of an inch. Not good. So I've got to find out what's wrong with this and I've talked to the owner and I think the only way we're going to find out what's wrong with this is to pull the cylinder head off. Now that's going to be well not much of a problem really you know we, we'll I'll show you a few shortcuts that you can do but it's it's really a mystery so I've got to take this head off and put it under pressure like 130 psi pressure to see if there's any cracks in this head I have a suspicion that it might be cracked in either the exhaust port or in one of the glow plug tube holes it's losing water through somewhere but I can't find out where now the quick thing about this is like I say it's a bit windy out here so I hope you can hear me but uh, somebody's, else, somebody's had this head off before to take the glow plugs out now did they know that there's a certain sequence of pattern and torques well, well not so much torques you have to do it by angles to turn the head bolts down did they know that who knows so I can't see where the water's going that's the problem I don't know where it's going so I'm gonna pull the head off first of all I'm gonna flip the bonnet open completely uh, I'm gonna drain the coolant out things you do normally so I'm not going to show you all that because you've seen all that lot before I'm not going to show you step by step by step other videos can show you that but I'm going to show you a few little shortcuts to get this head off all right and we'll, when we take the head bolts off let's have a look and see if they're tightened down properly one of the first things you do when you're doing a, a, a cylinder head is drop the coolant right that's easy isn't it until this happens the bung snapped off. This has been over tightened. And now when I've come to untighten it, the damn thing snapped off. This is going to be a problem. So now I've got to take quite a little bit more off to get the remains of that thread out of the hole. Dear me, what a job this is turning out to be. So we're just about to ready to uh, take the head bolts off this uh, cylinder head of this 300. Um, I've put the um, push rods through a piece of cardboard and the little arrow points to the front. Caps are on the injectors and on the injector pumps. What did I notice? Well, I'll tell you what I did notice. This pipe here is full of gunge. I don't like that. I don't know where that's come from. Uh, other things uh, to notice. I, I just I didn't take the manifold off completely I just pushed it to one side uh, I've got to somehow get the bung out the bottom uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem to get the manifold bolts out let's come around this side to get the manifold bolts out I use a, a nice little three quarter inch 15 millimeter socket and and that's really handy for getting underneath the manifold to get the one out under the middle of the head that's that done uh, what else is it? There's nothing. It's really, really, really simple. I'm going to take the injectors out when they're on the bench. It's going to save a lot of messing about because uh, it is quite, it's quite windy today, and I'm trying to rush this job because I think it's going to rain at any moment. So the next thing is I'm going to get a 19 millimeter socket out and uh, start to unloosen these bolts from the outside to the inside, like in a spiral. I hope you get that. Like I say, I am rushing this job a little bit because it's going to rain at any moment. Now the reason why I'm doing it outside is because I've got the shops full of bodywork parts that I'm painting. So I don't really want to move them. <laughs> so I'm kind of stuck really. It's just one of them things, you know, this week has been a heat wave and now it's just going to just pour down. So let's get this job done and let's get it into the shop and so we can have a look at this cylinder head. One thing I did observe about this uh, engine is how dirty 
this cylinder head is the, the oil inside usually diesels are nice and clean I just wonder what oil's been in it so nothing to report really on the head bolts there was one that was a little bit loose the second one from the back at this side wasn't particularly tight but it was tight enough so the next thing is now to try and get the head off oh, that, was <laughs> that was easy wasn't it? I thought it was going to be all stuck and tight <laughs> dear me sometimes we have a lot a lot of fun in this job right let's have a look I'm glad they're not cast iron. First of all, I can see they've put the old type of head gasket on. Um, but there's no cuts or cut, uh, cuts or anything in it. Uh, the, the the newer type of gasket is a the newer type of gasket is a laminate gasket. But this looks perfect both sides if you can see that that's uh, this, is, this is the first time I've seen it too I, I didn't fake this video so what's wrong with it I don't know I think what we've got to do now is set up and um, do a pressure test on this head now I'm not going to do that until tomorrow but I'm going to clear my bench off and clear everything up here and then we'll go and do a, a pressure test. So we're in the workshop now so the wind noise should be lower. <clears throat> I can't see where this has been leaking from I must admit. This has really got me uh, perplexed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it down, we're going to take the glow plugs out, take the injectors out, and clamp it, well we have to take the front uh, thermostat housing off and box it all in to, box it all in to make it uh, airtight because we're going to fill this full of compressed air so um, but initial observations are quite you know like there's, there's lots of really burnt on oil on the top of these valves and you know something I'm moving these around and this one especially is very very loose hmm. let's first of all do a pressure test we've all had injectors that are difficult to get out so I had my machine shop man make me adapter make me an adapter to go onto the end of my slide hammer so all I have to do is screw it onto the top of the injector like that notice too that I put some cardboard under the head so the head's not actually on the bare metal because the injectors and the glow plugs do stick out so and that's it straight out so we do that with all of them washers come out on that one and then we'll uh, get it ready for testing I mentioned to you before that the um, the oil in this was very dirty so just as an initial check I went round and I've pushed against the side to see how tight these valve guides are so far so good uh oh I don't know if you can see that one's moving around like nobody's business look and that's the dirty one I just wonder if and that's on the uh, exhaust is that causing a lot of dirt in here that one's not much better, that one's tight that one's tight, that one's tight, this one's giving us cause for concern not good so like I say now I'm going to take off this front cover, this uh, thermostat housing and then we'll be ready for um, um, pressure testing 
So I hope you can see here, got about 130 psi on there, that's my shock pressure. And we've got bubbles. Strangely enough though, it's into the combustion chamber. Now, this has got me wondering, well not combustion chamber, but it's into the valve cover. Rocker box. Now, do you think it could be pressure is forcing water out? Because I don't think there was any water in the oil, but um, I'm not really sure. There's no other cracks from anywhere else, and I did make sure that the gas, well, there's a big thick rubber gasket at the bottom on a 5 16th plate, so that can't be uh, leaking. And it's not leaking from underneath, so it's got to be leaking from the head. But I think that shows us that the head's shot. We can't do anything with that. You know, it's, I've put my finger inside, and it's on the tube uh, where the push rod goes through. See if I put my hand in there and pull it up a bit. Yeah. Strange one that one, isn't it? Never seen one leak through there before. Hmm. So I took the, the head out the bath and um, Sure enough, was it number four push rod tube is leaking. There's no way we can weld that up. Uh, yeah, so it looks like another head. In desperate times, I would have put a sleeve into that, but it's just not worth it because if it leaks again, I've got to do the job again. Now, I'm just wondering whether this is something to do with this vicinity of where this valve is here. You see this valve here, it's all dirty and black, whereas these ones here, they, they shine up really nice. It looks like something's been really hot in this area, because uh, these are the two exhaust valves. And like I say, look at that moving. These two move. These are all nice and tight. Um, what else was I going to say to you? Yeah, I think what I might just do... Oh yeah! That's right, in this car, in this, this tube, there's a breather tube that comes out here down to the crankcases. And, and I mentioned earlier in this video, that, that was all gungy and gunky. But you see, there's no signs of any coolant in the rocker box. There's no like molasses or anything like that, so it's a bit of a mystery. Anyway, just to, sh let's have a bit of a play with this. I'm going to take off my airline. This tap isn't very good, but it leaks a bit. But we're going to take that pressure down to about 15 psi. It's not as much. So why didn't I test to find that? The pressure tester. Is it the hole is so fine that when it warms up it gets bigger? Because this is cold now. It's a real mystery, isn't it? Anyway, I think the customer will be happy that we found something. So, um, I think we'll order another head up. I'm not going to take a chance with this. I could put a sleeve in it, but I'm not that cheap. I'm cheap, but I'm not that cheap. Because otherwise I'll have to do the job again. So, always test heads. Don't take them for granted. Alright? So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please ask. Don't, don't be afraid to ask. And like and subscribe, etc. Because I've got a hungry raccoon to feed. Talk to you later.